Hey, here's another Touch Designer tutorial. This one is just about how to switch between a few different video sources. And uh, I showed this in another video, but it was a lot more complex and was kind of an advanced version of this. So I just did want to show like a really simple example. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get those video sources. So I'm going to use movie file in. I'm holding down control and I'm going to click this three times so that I get three different movie file in tops. And uh, for each one, I'll just change the video that's there. So I'll hit the plus sign here and choose one of the nature videos that they give us as examples. So there's video one, here's video two, and the last one is gonna be this one. Okay, so um, I'm going to also add a switch top. And this is what will allow me to switch between the three. I'll hold down control and highlight the three of those before I make a connection and now I can see that there's a, they're all fed into the switch. And if I change the index to anything from zero to one, it's the first video, one to two is the second video, and then two to three, but actually two and up is the last video. So now what if I wanted this to change based on maybe an Arduino sensor, maybe a potentiometer or light sensor or something like that. So um, I will double click out here and I'll just pretend I've got a, vi an, an, a signal coming in like that or a channel of, of information by adding a noise here. So I've got a noise chop and it's not moving, but I can go over to common here and choose time slice off, or sorry, time slice on. And now I can actually see it's it's moving about. Um, let me add a, no, a null top right after that because this is the thing that's going to become the index over here. It's not too useful yet because the range is a little weird. So let's click and see what some of the options are. First of all, let's see if we can Add a uh, whoops. Add a trail top, uh, trail chop here, and see what this looks like on a graph. Okay, there it is. And one of the things I like to do is just uh, add check viewer active here, and then uh, get rid of the vertical adapt and make my own vertical range. So I'm going to do negative one to one, so that we can kind of see what the actual range is here. And it looks like it's kind of hovering around zero and going above and below that. So it looks maybe like it's 0.5 to minus 0.5. If we click on the noise, we'll be able to see that there's an amplitude of one and the offset is zero, meaning that it's centered around this zero line here. So from the top to the bottom is approximately one. And um, one thing we can do is to kind of put it above the zero is to add uh, 0.5 for the offset. So what we should see is now it's like, from zero to one-ish. Um, we can change how this noise looks. You can see like sometimes it gets carried away and goes above, that might be okay. But we can also do things like change the harmonics to change the kind of behavior of the line. Uh, that was to one in the beginning. We can also change the period to kind of stretch it out. If we add the, uh, make the period longer, we'll get a kind of a, a more slowly changing line, which kind of looks like if we had added a lag in here, it would do a similar thing. Uh, there's also different types of noise. Some of the noises don't allow you to make changes to these other uh, parameters, but sparse and uh, hermite, I think, um, kind of sticks more around the center. So that wouldn't be so useful for us. Um, and then there are other options like exponent, uh, which I think probably changes how much of a change is occurring. So as we go up, it um, it is is less of a change. And I don't know what the default was here. Let's reset that. Default was one. So we can see it's, you know, we can, we can adjust that. We can also adjust the roughness to uh, determine how, because mm, because I'm changing so many things here, it's kind of harder to see, but let's make the period one again. and then change the roughness. And you can see what happens as I increase the roughness, we get something that's a little wilder. And if I lower that, then we get uh, maybe like a tamer version. So it's, I mean, it's all up to you how you want the noise to look, but uh, we can also go back to roughly the beginning. We had 0.5 for roughness. Um, and like I said, inc increasing harmonics will give us a more jittery line but incre increasing the period will kind of slow it down. So um, you can also look at the help for noise and there are lots of, I mean, I'm sort of stumbling through this, but there are lots of ways that you can uh, have more control over it. So um, 
just put this back at one. Okay. And let's reset this as well. Okay, so we've got something that roughly goes between zero and one, and it mostly stays around the middle, and that's a place where we could actually make some changes, but it seems like it, it kind of varies just enough to, to see what's gonna happen here. So um, I'm going to add a math operator in between, and for this, I'm gonna change the range from zero to one, and I could have done that from the start, right? Changed it from negative 0.5 to 0.5 to a new range. I just wanted to show you that it's possible to do that without adding a math chop. So uh, here I'm gonna change zero to one to be something like zero to three. That way it'll give me a number between zero and 2.99999. Then that's kind of what we want, right? So if I take that number and uh, use that as my index over here, we'll see what happens. So I'll turn on viewer active for that null chop. I'll uh, drag it over to the switch and then drag it over to the index and choose chop reference. And what I've got now is uh, you can see here as this changes, as it goes down towards zero, it goes to the first one, this kind of steamy scene. And then as it goes up past one, it ends up at this other rivery, lakey scene. So if we were thinking, okay, this is too, moving too quickly, we could add some other things in here, like a lag chop or a filter or something, or we could just change behaviors of the noise. But um, this is, you know, obviously like if this was data coming in from an Arduino, we'd be relying more on these other uh, things like filter or lag or um, analyze or whatever. So I showed that in another video as well. So hopefully that makes sense. And um, now you know how to switch between things. You can also do the same thing to switch between audio. You would just end up using, uh, well, audio in instead of, um, instead of movie file in. Oh, the last thing, obviously I didn't mention this, but if, you know, we're getting decimal numbers here, so it would be useful if we could actually go partially between one and, an, and another, and you just have to check this box, blind, blend between inputs, and you get that effect. So you can see it's cross-fading in between them. Uh, hopefully that's useful, and uh, take care.